Good day everyone, I am Eileen A. Brelia together with my groupmates Chris Lindan Yunyan, Eleka Grace Gomez, and Joshua Paul Piginis to introduce you the Alfred McCoy's Philippine Cartoons, Political A Glance at Selected Philippine Political Caricature, Caricature of the American Era. So first, let's talk about caricature. Caricature is a picture, description, or imitation of a person in which certain striking characteristics are, ex are exaggerated to create a comic or grotesque effect. Ito daw yung mga type of art na ano, gumagamit ng exaggerated characteristics like yung big head or like ugly face para ma-express yung ano nila, ma-express yung emotions or like katangian ng nang inaano nila, sinisimbolo nila dun sa art na yon. So, another one is, let's talk about Alfred McCoy, which is the author of the book. Born on June 8, 1945 in Massachusetts, USA, an American professor of SE Asian History at the University of Wisconsin at Madison where he also served as director of the Center for SE Asian Studies, a federally funded national resource center. He spent the past quarter century writing about the politics and the history of the opium trade. Spent 30 years writing about Southeast Asian history and politics. After earning a PhD in Southeast Asia history at Yale, the writing of McCoy on this region has focused on two topics, Philippine political history and global opium trafficking. So, yung op opium daw is a highly addictive, non-synthetic narcotic that is extracted from the poppy plant, Papa Versamniferum. The opium poppy is the key source for many narcotics including morphine, codeine, and heroin. So, ano uh, daw si Alfred McCoy is known is a known professor na may maraming may maraming book. Isa na dun yung ano niya, isa na yung pinaka known niya which is itong ano uh, Philippine cartoon, yung political glance. So, anong pinaka focus niya talaga is Southeast Asian history. After niya ma-earn yung PhD niya, mas nag-focus siya lalo sa ano sa political history ng Philippines. So, ito na nga yung naging naging reason, I mean naging reason para magkaroon siya ng ng book na ano parang collect collection of caricature na nag nag express or nagpapakita ng political history noon noong American era so hindi lang isang tao ang nag nag collect i mean gumawa ng book na yan so let me introduce Alfredo Rosas Alfredo Rosas Rosas is born on April 29, 1932 in Santa Cruz, Manila. Citizen is, citizenship niya is Filipino, co-author of Political Caricature of the American Era, a gifted artist writer from the known Rosas clan in the Philippine print media. Ito, co-author, di ba, ko, ang pinaka-author nun is si Alfred McCoy, but, but yung, pin, yung libro na Political Caricature of the American Era have and co-author which is Alfredo Rosas ano siya known I mean sikat daw siya sa ano sa print media like gifted artist writers siya yung katulong ni Alfredo ni Alfred McCoy na pag-collect ng mga mga caricature regarding sa political history ng Philippines so before we uh, before we jump sa mga examples ng caricature let me ano Philippine political cartoons gained full expression during the American era, while 377 the cartoons compiled in this book speak for themselves. Historian Alfred McCoy's extensive research in Philippine and American archives provides a comprehensive background not only to the cartoon but to the turbulent period as well. In his book, Philippine Cartoons, Political Caricature of the American Era, Alfred McCoy, together with, Alfre with Alfredo Rosas, compiled political cartoons published in the newspapers, dailies, and periodicals in the aforementioned time period. Sinasabi lang dito na ano, yung mga caricature na nasa book niya is ano lang, collection ng mga caricature from newspapers na nakikita nila daily. Tapos, parang sila lang na nag-analyze. Pero, this, the caricature speaks, speaks with, themselves, with themselves na parang like halatang halata na dun since 
exaggerated nga yung ano, so hindi na mahirap, hindi na mahirap yung pindihin. So, let's talk about the analysis of political caricatures during the American period. Political cartoons and caricature are a rather recent art form, which veered away from the classical art by exaggerating human features and poking fun at its subject. Cartoon became an effective tool of publicizing opinions through heavy use of symbolism, which is different from a verbose written editorial and opinion pieces. Alam, parang sinasabi lang dito na ano, yung cartoon naging effective tool siya para ma-express or like ma-publicize yung mga opinions opinions ng mga Pilipino regarding dun sa ano, way ng, like sa politik, yung politics na on ng American ng American era. So, parang inaano dito na mas parang different siya dun sa mga ano, sa mga like written lang ganun. Kasi nga, ini-illustrate siya. So, parang nakikita siya. Ina-exaggerate siya. Parang mas madali siya intindihin. Ganun. So, let's talk the first example in the ano, in the in the book. A public post is not a hereditary crown. The first example shown was published in The Independent on May 20, 1916. The cartoon shows a politician from Tondo named Dr. Santos passing his crown to his brother-in-law, Dr. Barcelona. A Filipino guy depicted wearing salakot and barong Tagalog was trying to, to stop Santos, telling the latter to stop giving Barcelona the crown because it is not his to begin with. In this, it was illustrated how politics ran in that period wherein Filipino politicians did not, uh, did not understand well enough the essence of the democracy and the accompanying democratic institution and processes. Dito sa example na to, parang pinapakita kung like, hindi masyadong naiintindihan ng mga, ano, mga Pilipinong politician yung how democracy, democracy works kasi nga diba kaka- ano pa lang, kaka-introduce pa lang sa kanila nun, ng democratic na anal, kaka-ano pa lang sa kanila. So, parang, yung ano dito, yung parang, in sinasabi dito yung how political dynasty works, kasi nga, parang pinapasa. Like, pinapasa lang, even though yung position is not his, like, hindi naman talaga dapat, kasi dapat yung pagpasa ng position na yan, like, yung position is parang na-represent ng crown, is parang dapat na ano ng mga, like, binoto ng karamihan, like, ng mga mamayan, ganun. So, ito yung sinasabi nila na, ano, na naging, ano, na isa sa issue, sa issue noong, ano, sa, pol- sa politics noong American era. So, War Against the Speculators The second cartoon was also published by Independent on June 16, 1917. This was drawn by Fernando Amorsolo and was aimed as a commentary on the workings of Manila police at the period. Here, we see a Filipino child who stole a skinny chicken because he had nothing to eat. The police officer relentlessly pursuing the said child. A man wearing a salakot, labeled Juan de la Cruz, was grabbing the officer, telling him to leave the small-time pickpockets and thieves and turn at the great thieves instead. He was pointing to huge warehouses containing bulks of rice, milk, and grocery products. So the second cartoon, uh, sinasabi dito na, there is a Filipino child who stole a skinny chicken because he had nothing to eat. Then, there is also a police officer pursuing the said child na makulong siya. Pero, there is another police officer na sinasabi na pabayaan na lang yung bata at huwag na, huwag na makulong. Instead, mas pagtuon na ng pansin yung mga great, great thieves sa katulad ng malalaki yung mga ginawang kasalanan. Death cars. The third cartoon was a commentary on the unprecedented cases of colorum automobiles in the city streets. The Philippine Free Press published this commentary when a fatal accident involving colorum vehicles and taxis occurred too often already. The transition from a Catholic-centered Spanish-Filipino society to an imperial American-assimilated one and its complications were shown in this caricature.
automobiles became a popular mode of transportation in the city. However, the laws and policy implementation were mediocre. This means an increasing colorum and unlicensed vehicles is transported at the city and the rules about the insurance of driver's license were loose. Traffic police cannot be bothered with rampant violation. So, sa panahon noon, tinatawag yung mga kolorum, kolorum na mga namamasada ngayon is death cars sa kanila. Which is, yung death cars is yung mga hindi pinapa, pinapayagang mamasada. And kapag nakita silang namamasada, meron silang haharaping punishment and kailangan nilang sumunod sa laws and family policies. This Ford Carton Depis SNMA, a blown up police officer, was at the screen saying that couples are not allowed to make and make love in the, in the theater too. And two young girls look horrified while an older couple seem amused. So, sinasabi dito sa image na to is may dalawang couple na nanonood na si then, siguro, they um showing love or what, ano, make love in theater. And, uh, napansin siguro sila ng police officer. So, sinabi ng police officer na bawal yung ginagawa nila sa loob ng sine. And, um, an older, an older couple si Anya. So, na, um, tumawa sila sa ginawa ng police officer. So, yun lang. So, bali ang pinapoint out lang pala dito is how public display of affection then two different kinds of reactions regarding dun sa rule The next cartoon was published by The Independent on November 27, 1950. Here we see the caricature of Uncle Sam riding a chariot pulled by Filipinos wearing school uniforms. The Filipino boys were carrying American objects like baseball bats, whiskey, and boxing gloves. Mokoy, in his caption to the said cartoon, says that this cartoon was based on an event in 1907 when William Howard Taft was brought to the Manila Pier riding a chariot pulled by Iseo de Manila students. Such was condemned by the nationalists at that time. This shows how Americans control the mentality and consciousness of Filipinos through seemingly harmless uh, objects. Here in this part, we have Alterno Les Partidos. The last cartoon was published by Lipang Calago on August 24, 1907. In this picture, we can see Uncle Sam rationing courage to the politicians and members of the Progressista Party, sometimes known as Federalista Party, while members of Nationalista Party look on and wait for their turn. This cartoon depletes the patronage of the United States being coveted by politicians from either of party. This shows that the essence of competing political parties to enforce choices among the voters was cancelled out. The problem continues up to the present where politicians transfer from one party to another depending on which party was powerful in a specific period. Okay, so kung dito sa Uncle Sam riding a chariot. Based on, sa illustration na ito, pinapakita dito na may isang taong kilala or pwede nang sabihin natin na may kapangyarihan siyang magmanipulate ng utak na ibang tao. Ako saan, true words, kaya niyang kaya niyang paikutin yung utak ng tao hanggang sa sundin siya. Kasi based dito sa information na kalagay dito, 
nakalagay na this shows how Americans control the mentality and consciousness of Filipinos. So, bali dito pa lang, masabi na rin na parang isa siyang tao na may kapangyarihan na pwedeng katakutan ng ibang, ng ibang tao. Kasi dahil siya dito, sinusunod siya ng mga estudyante. Kung sino namang normal na tao pag ganun, hindi siya basta-basta susunod din sa mga ganyan. Then dito naman sa next is about sa El Turno Los Partidos. May additional information lang dito which is ang kasam was serving as patronage courage to the people at the left which is yung mga federalists. Which means that this party has already earned position and are no political personalities of that time. We, meanwhile, the Nationalista Party goes at the right are waiting for their turn to be served by Uncle Sam. His courage as token of support and of the upcoming uh, election. So, bali dito, sinasabi dito is, parang, parang gusto mo lang malaman yung, yung way niya or yung kung ano man yung gusto, gusto niya sabihin sa tao. Sa so, kalagay dito is parang, based sa illustration, parang, lahat sila nag-aantay dyan sa sa courage or kung ano man yung nakalagay dun sa sinuserve ng tao na kilala. So, bali, sinasabi ni Nilton that this is, it is evident in the very future that even at those times, being the side of highly influenced people represented by Uncle Sam, especially during election, will put you at a huge advantage. So, meron niya tayong ano, parang uh, situation dito na parang relatable ang Pilipinas. Which is yung time na may election and then parang dahil nga mas kilala yung pamilya nila, parang parang mas na ano sila, parang mas naingganyo sila, iboto yung tao na yan. Dahil sa akala nila is uh, skill enough, parang sa so, tingin nila is capable enough siya dun sa position na yun. So, wala naman akong minimum doubt dito. Pero yun yung observation ko about dun sa statements na to. So, I hope you guys learned something about our topic. This is JP as your last supporter. Thank you for listening.